is it okay for Christians to get a divorce? Scripture tells us that marriage is a lifetime commitment. However, divorce is a reality for so many people, including Christians. Statistics show that almost 50% of all marriages in the US will end in separation or divorce. So it's inevitable for some faithful Christians to experience divorce. Given God's teachings and emphasis on marriage, family, and morality, divorce can be an even more complicated situation for Christians. However, this is due in large part to the misconceptions people have about God's teachings on divorce. So in this video, we're going to discuss common misconceptions that exist about divorce for Christians and what the Bible teaches about divorce. Misconception number one, true Christians don't get divorced. Some people assume that divorce just means the couple had a lack of faith or a lack of trust in God. If the couple had only worked harder, their marriage would have survived eventually. Marriages are not exempt from the destruction of this world, even if both parties are dedicated Christians. In reality, people who go through a divorce aren't worse or less spiritual than anyone else. The truth is, marriages are not exempt from divorce, even for the most faithful Christians. In fact, Jesus himself helps us see that yes, divorce shouldn't be something we do casually, but there are times when it can be appropriate. In Matthew 5:32, Jesus says, But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Since the Bible uses the terms except for sexual immorality or in marital unfaithfulness, this appears to give God's permission for divorce along with remarriage. The Apostle Paul added to the teachings of Jesus what is called the Pauline privilege. According to this concept found in 1 Corinthians, Paul taught that if any unbelieving spouse leaves a believer, the believer is not bound to the marriage relationship but is free to remarry. Misconception number two, God hates divorce, so it must be a sin. This misconception in part comes from Malachi 2.16, which says, For the man who does not love his wife but divorces her, says the Lord God of Israel, covers his garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts, so guard yourselves in your spirit and do not be faithless. However, if you put the verse into context with the rest of the scripture, you begin to understand things clearer. The context of that verse is of the unfaithful spouse who hurts their partner deeply. It's about being cruel to your spouse, and God hates the actions that often lead to divorce. Many Christians have come to the conclusion that God hates divorce because of the horrible pain and suffering that it causes his children, but it is far less about divorce being a sin and more about God empathizing with us. So if someone chooses to get a divorce, it is not our place to judge. Their choice is between them and God. Instead of judging, we need to remember God is the redeemer of all things. Throughout scripture, we are given many promises of hope. In John 11, Jesus proclaims that he is the resurrection and life. He can take someone from the death of divorce and breathe new life into them. God will take the broken mess of a heart and bring it back to life after the pain. While divorce isn't what anyone wants, including God, it does not mean that it is a sin for Christians. While God certainly wants our marriages to succeed and expects us to do what we can to keep them together, getting a divorce is okay for Christians in certain situations. And God recognizes that. He sees the pain and the broken hearts and offers his love and comfort and strength through Christ to move forward if a divorce is necessary. So, we would like to know how God has helped you in a tough relationship. Please share your faith in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more from BeliefNet. Thanks.